HDR is the latest big buzzword that's making its rounds around the industry and is shaping up to be one of the most exciting new developments in the video industry since 1080p. Unfortunately, it can be a bit tricky to explain, so we thought we'd go through some of the main things that you need to know about HDR. Firstly, the HDR that we're talking about is different to the photography term which has been around for years. HDR photography is when you take several pictures at different exposures and then you blend them together in post to get the details down in the shadows as well as in the sky and the highlights. But the HDR that we're talking about is just one single exposure. Nothing changes on the camera work side of things at all, but it's graded to take advantage of new HDR compatible displays that are able to show a far wider dynamic range than normal TVs and monitors can. So, what do we mean by normal screens? Well, pretty much every TV or monitor so far uses a standard called Rec. 709, which has been around since 1990. Although our cameras can record well over 10 stops of dynamic range nowadays, Rec. 709 can only actually display between 6 and 7 of those stops. Ultra HD Premium is a new TV standard which means that a 4K TV is HDR compatible. For a TV or monitor to be able to display HDR, it needs to have a high enough contrast ratio, dark enough blacks and bright enough whites. It also needs to be able to accept 10-bit colour, and dis therefore display a wider range of colours than normal Rec. 709 technology can. A few of the most modern TVs you can buy will be able to display HDR. It's not that common just yet, but I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of it in the TV industry over the next year or so. So, once people have TVs which will be able to display HDR, we need some HDR content to show on them. Luckily, on the camera acquisition side of things, our current cameras are already perfectly capable of capturing HDR. You just need to use a log format to make sure that you're recording as many stops of dynamic range as you can. We're now starting to see some products that enable us to monitor in HDR on set. For example, Atmos have brought out their Flame series of monitor recorders, and Small HD have released their large production monitors with HDR capabilities, and there's other products as well. This means that when you're filming in log and you intend to grade and distribute in HDR, you'll be able to see the image on set using that same technology. And then once you've captured your footage, you have to grade it to take advantage of that extra dynamic range. This is where most of the work with HDR is going to happen and where the process differs from normal video production. Grading software is starting to introduce support for HDR. Resolve can handle it, the latest Premiere Pro version can, and I'm sure it won't be long before every video editing software has some method of controlling HDR images. And then of course, once you've finalised your grade and your HDR project is ready, you've got to actually get it to your audience. Distribution is still very much a question mark when it comes to HDR. The only certain is that online streaming sites like Netflix and Amazon Video have already started updating their key titles to have HDR versions. Plus YouTube has actually announced it will support HDR content as well, although no details have come out just yet as to how that will actually work. UHD Blu-rays will have HDR support and who knows whether broadcasters will pick it up for normal TV channels but it's definitely possible. Although the move to full HD distribution has been slow in the broadcast world, let alone 4K, technically HDR wouldn't require much extra bandwidth at all. So it could be that we see a move towards HDR channels on TV, who knows? Hopefully that clears up some of the confusion about HDR. But do you have any more questions? Are you excited about the rise of HDR content? Well, let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.